Hey Wampers, in this video I'll be teaching you step by step how to make a simple but lovely flower using curves and some basic primitives in Womp. So let's dive in and feel free to follow along. So let's start by hovering over the top bar where we find our basic primitives to work with. We want to start with a sphere and if we drag it from the center we can scale it bigger or smaller. At the right we find the object's properties menu where we can make change to the color and material. We're going for a fairly saturated yellow for the middle part of the flower, also giving it some roughness. And then we can already get out our second shape which is a curve. So delete the second point, go into the curve settings and choose a cylinder. We can simply exchange primitives with one another and I'm also increasing the density. I'm then going into the point one settings where we can scale our primitive and round it up. I'm giving it the full roundness here and changing the color to a fairly white, almost white, a bit of pinkish tone. I'm also giving this quite a bit of roughness as well as translucency. This is going to be our paddles. So for that, I'm just scaling the starting point a little bit smaller, bring it to the side and rotate it so it's facing upwards. Now I'm basically just dragging this point by holding down Alt, we create a copy of it. Now we have a two point curve and we can simply just scale the second point bigger and it will automatically create a transition between the points. I'm also going back into the curve settings to change the group strength to 5 in that way it's not as thick. Just play around with the size that you want to have for your pedal and then the question is how do we actually rotate it and create multiple pedals. Those of you who have followed the beer tutorial last week already know how this works. We basically copy the sphere that we already had and we turn it into a cylinder we're scaling this very big so the box of the cylinder exceeds outside of our pedal. In that way, if we select both of them together, we have the perfect center to rotate around. So we are basically copying our curve point that is the pedal to have a second one and select the second one together with our rotation cylinder. And now we can simply rotate around. It's a nice little trick that makes it really easy to have accurate rotation without it being a pain really. And if we already have to, we can basically repeat the same process, copying both of them and in that way making it faster. But before doing that, I'm just adjusting the pedal a little bit here because I think they're quite a bit too big. So I'm just repeating the same process after I have adjusted the size. And there we go. This is how we can easily create the main part of the flower already. And you can use this for anything really. It's a really useful trick. And we can now bring the sphere inside of our union here as well and call this the flower. This is now one group that you can move all together or also scale. I'm now just placing the flower so we can bring in the green part of it. So I'm rotating it a little bit, facing the camera and making positioning it so it's ready for us to move on. So next we are getting out a new curve point and this will be the string of the flower now. So we're doing the same thing, we're going in, increasing the density, bringing the group strength down and then we also want to choose our color. And here we'll do another nice little trick that we can do with curves. We basically can create color transitions between the curve points. So for the first one I'm choosing a fairly light green color also giving it a bit of roughness and translucency again. I'm placing it just below the flower and then copying this at the curve point that we made holding down Alt again and now going back into the color of it. And here I'm just changing the color to a bit of a darker tone. And here you can already see the lovely color transition between the first point and the second point. And we just continue to go down with our points, scaling them a bit smaller as we go as well. And then if we are happy, it might look like something like this. Now we want to copy our string curve and delete all the points except for one of the middle ones. 
because now we can just use the advantage of still having the position settings and color of that curve and start creating some leaf out of that. So for that I'm just scaling this down, still keeping it as a cylinder, giving it quite a bit of roundness and scaling it very small. Then we copy it to a second point that we create bigger and we also rotate it with the flow of the curve and what a leaf would look, look like. And then the third point we make very very small again so it comes down to, you know, have that kind of leaf form. And I think that looks fairly lovely, we can also play around with the group strength to make it thinner or thicker, just how we want it. And then we can just copy that leaf as well and turn it around, that almost creates a bit of variety by itself as well. So feel free to experiment a little bit for yourself with that, give it your own personality. And then if we have the full flower, we can simply also copy that flower, make the other one a bit smaller, rotate it around. And like that, we have two lovely flowers. It almost looks like with the leaves that they're holding their arm around each other, which looks very lovely, I think. And yeah. So now let's select all of our elements and bring the flowers up a little bit, making some space for the pot. For that, we want to grab a cylinder from our basic primitives. We want to bring it just under them, scale it a bit wider and maybe also increase the roundness a little bit. And then we can also go in and give this a color. For that, I'm choosing, you know, what a pot would kind of look like, this kind of orangey brownish tone, um, giving it a bit of roughness, but a bit of shininess still. And that's the top part of the pot. We also want to save this material straight away because we want to apply it to the curve that we're using now to make the bottom part. For that same thing, we go into the curve settings, we increase the density, bring down group strength, we turn it into a cylinder and now we place it just under that and make it a tiny bit thinner or a bit smaller than the top part of it. And we also want to give it the same kind of roundness and then just copy another point that we bring down and make it a lot smaller. Like that we basically already have that kind of shape that the flower pot like this have. Then we just go into the materials menu and also apply the same material that we've just saved for the pot. Now obviously the last thing missing now is to make it whole. For that we bring in the cylinder into the same union just so we have it all together in a pot union. And then we want to copy the cylinder, the top part, turn it into a negative, scale it smaller but higher and in that way we create this hole in it. I'm also giving it a tiny bit of goop strength just to smooth it out. And now we just need to, the dirt and for that we basically just need to copy the last cylinder that we used for the negative, turn it back into a positive, maybe we can scale it a bit smaller, more round. And then we just need to change the color. So for that we go back to the objects properties menu and unapply the material. So now we can choose a new color and basically just give it a dirt kind of color. For that a brownish tone and high roughness is good. Okay so when we're done happy with our model we go on to the presentation part. For that we want to disable the floor grid in the lights and environment panel. Go to the backdrop menu where we can change our backdrop color. Here we have so many cool options, it's really hard to choose but I think I'm going for a very light pinkish tone here as well, almost in the white direction just like the flower. And then we can play around with the global lighting. This changes so much about how your creation looks so take your time with that. And then we can also go on the top bar and grab light from the lights menu. You can also find this in the global lighting menu as well. And here I'm just playing around with a spherical light that I'm bringing to the side of the vase. You can also change the color, give it a bit of a warm or a cold tone. It's really lovely to play around with that. It is then time to publish our creation to the community. For that we go to the share button, click on publish. Here we can see our thumbnail. This is how your creation will be displayed on the discover page. We can give it a name and also add some hashtags. Those are labels that people are able to click on on the Discover page. And we can also change our copyright settings if we don't want other people to use our creation. You can then share it and publish it to the community. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We would love to see your flowers on the Discover page. I'll see you in the next video.